We talk about the pride points of our university, and my goodness, we are so proud of you. The Women's Basketball Hall of Fame induction was just an amazing accomplishment last year for us to celebrate. Dr. McPhee describes you as one of the best decisions he's made as a university president. Well, uh, you know, the one thing that I, I promised Dr. McPhee that I would be probably as loyal or more loyal to any, to, than anybody that he's hired to Middle Tennessee State. I felt like one thing that we were not doing in the women's basketball program because of the tradition that girls basketball has in the state of Tennessee, it's on the same level as football and men's basketball. One of the few states around the country that does that, that why did Middle Tennessee average more people? You know, they were averaging at that time in, in, uh, in 2005, I think it was like 250, 260 people to a game. And one of the things I sold Dr. McPhee on was we got to get the community uh, involved in what's going on on campus. We got to get the community to invest in women's basketball. And uh, I think that's one of the points that I, I sold him on in the interview process. And I knew that those people were in this community. The great Hall of Fame head coach for Middle Tennessee, Rick Insell, at his 18th season. He's winning about three out of every four games. And he told us today he thinks they, they did enough in the regular season to warrant a bid to the tournament. The eighth all-time meeting between these two in the postseason. And these are the only two teams with multiple Conference USA tournament wins of the current teams. Nobody else has more than one. Best two programs in Conference USA over the years. Western Kentucky wins the opening tip. We'll see. Well, didn't take him long to launch the first three. I told you they average about 33 point attempts per game. Aaliyah Pitts, who has had a quiet tournament, gets him on the board. Now that makes 275 for the season and 886 attempts. That's fourth best in the nation. And looking at some of that size that Middle Tennessee is going to utilize in this one. Anastasia. In the last meeting, Savannah Wheeler went for 37 points in that one. Western Kentucky hit 16 threes, and they still could not win the game. Boldareva, six foot six. How are they going to compete with her inside? They, they've got to get a couple of bodies. Usually go with maybe a shorter lineup, a little quicker lineup, but they want that length to try to distract. They made two of their three shots, all three shots, three-point field goals. Mentioned they matched up a couple of times in the regular season. Middle Tennessee won at home, 94-81, and won at Western Kentucky on New Year's Eve, 80-75. to As they get inside for likely the first of many paint points tonight, Jalen Gregory second team all-conference USA this season. Too easy to get into the paint. Middle Tennessee does that well. They love to drive to the basket. That gets them to the free throw line. You've got to stop the movement inside the paint. And off the miss, Middle running again. And inside they will tie that one up. Possession arrow will keep it here. Being able to get to the hoop and drive. 21 games in double figures this year. Greg Collins, the fifth-year head coach at Western Kentucky, said, we feel like we can score enough to win a game against Middle Tennessee. question is, can we get enough stops? They've got to be efficient, too, Chris. We saw one turnover there. Certainly, everyone's got butterflies right now. It doesn't matter if you've been in this game before or not. It's playing for the championship. NCAA bid, and Gregory's starting to maneuver her... Defender, well, and, and that's everyone understanding their role, right? You've got four starters back, and what a great move against the rival that she wanted to go to school for and being able to connect. She's had some successful games. Decided to go to Western Kentucky because of the way they were setting her up with the med school. Absolutely. And this is what Western Kentucky does when they're playing their best. They force turnovers, and they turn it into points. It's Hayes again. Shot clock down to six. And an open look at three is good from Alexis Whittington. Alexis Whittington went to Riverdale High School. That's the same high school that Hayes went to. Now it's another three-point attempt for Western Kentucky. They're sixth in the first six minutes of this game. They've gone cold 
the last couple of minutes after a hot start. There's a deep one, and it's all net from Jalen Gregory, who now has eight. We spoke of the, late, the way the Lady Toppers like to light it up from three point, but they can hit the three when they need to. Yeah, they've got it all, the best offense and the best defense in the conference. And they're top three in majority of categories in Conference USA. I love what Savannah Weaver said to us earlier today as Middle Tennessee on this 6-0 run. Now they have them projected with a loss today to be among the, the last four teams into the tournament. We talked to Coach Incel about that today. He made no bones about it. But the way they challenged themselves in the offseason with a blowout victory over then number 18 Louisville. He said, hey, we thought we did enough even before we got here to this tournament. Weston trying to make them pay, and they can't. But they'll have another chance at it. That's one of the keys, rebounding. Tough to rebound against this Middle Tennessee team, but Otis Betancourt with the bucket after the offensive rebound, and that snaps a nearly six-minute scoring drought. You said it. This is a Middle Tennessee team that doesn't turn over the basketball. They only average about 11 per game. Ksenia Malaska, the sixth person of the year, takes a seat. There's another turnover, number seven. Miscommunication on the inbounds, and the Lady Toppers tie it up at 15. Shot clock is off. Gregory with two seconds at the buzzer. No good. Strong start and a strong finish. Western Kentucky, they're really stepping in. They're playing tight defense. They're making it difficult for the posts, both posts that Middle Tennessee has tried, to get comfortable in the paint. And again, they're going with a little bit more height here with the 6-6. But you take away the advantage of being a little quicker on the defensive side to get back. He got in there, but a really tough angle to try to score. And now Wheeler, she can get to the line with the best of them. Savannah hit the deck hard on that one, being helped up by her teammates. Savannah wants to go in to be a uh, physical education major and help out special education, in that special education area. And uh, she has been superb in three areas for Conference USA this season. Savvy Savannah, who's yeah. top 25 in the country in free throw attempts, free throws made, and free throw percentage at 87%. Good switch there defensively. Underneath, a little back door, ah. a nice one, Hope Savori, and it's Western Kentucky that has the advantage in the paint right now. They are outscoring Middle Tennessee in the paint. Savori, the co-freshman of the year back in 2021. Middle responds, Alexis Whittington. Just 29% from three-point range on the season, but she's made two of her three. The one thinks they've already done enough to earn an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, but make no mistake, they want another championship. Western's whole three-point shooting continues. They're three for 14, and Middle Tennessee is five for 11 from deep. That one from Courtney Whitson. Courtney Ritson ran the floor without the basketball, got to her spot, made it easy for her teammates to find her wide open. You know, and, and credit Wheeler on the play. Nice assist, but look at how wide open she is. Running the floor quickly, getting out to the perimeter. Nobody's out there. Golden opportunity, nails it down. She had five threes, 18 points against UTEP. And uh, another player third all-time in, in three, excuse me, fifth all-time in three. Wheeler taking a breather. And both free throws from Hope Savori. Now into the posts and back out again. And another splash down from Whittington. She is hot. Third three of the game. Good to see Whittington. This is, the, if you know, if you're a Middle Tennessee fan, you're liking this right now. Whittington had a lockdown. Back-to-back -to -back top defenders, top players in Conference USA the last two games. And now things are starting to open up for her on the offensive side of the ball. And a nice slash to the hoop and one for number one, Courtney Blakely. 
And Middles on an 11-2 run. Well, the defense for Middle Tennessee has held Western Kentucky stagnant for the last 230. They are working hard at the offensive end. You love the young Courtney Blakely taking it to the bucket. This is a sophomore who's trying to find her niche, get some PT. She has that poker face on the floor, whether things are rolling good or bad. Got kind of that ice look, showed it there going to the hoop. Couldn't finish on the three-point play. Savori fires on the three. They're now three for 16 from deep. Inside out once again. Whittington fouled on the three point attempt. Three shots coming. They've done a good job going inside out. Haven't scored much in the paint. But working it outside to Whittington. Megan Perry and Chris Walker breaking down this game and getting you caught up on all the other conference tournament action around the country. A-10 men's semis right before this one. It's going to be one versus two for the title. VCU against Dayton. CBS tomorrow. Now Western Kentucky hasn't made a field goal in over three minutes. It's a 13-2 run. For the one seed. Savori cut off. Nice little bounce and a bucket. Teresa Faustino. Blakely for three. You would have thought it would be Middle Tennessee. Shooting the lights out from deep. They're 7 to 14, 50%, while Western is under 20%. Another three point miss. And the lead continues to grow here in the second quarter. It was tied at 15 after one. The handles from Blakely. Gregory gets fouled. Credit Western Kentucky for getting back defensively to get those fast break points. They have 10 of those right now. Black clock again under 10. Alexis Mead spinning, and she'll get to the line for two. And Mead's not the person you want to foul. She's a career 80% free throw. That's two fouls now on Savannah Wheeler. So Wheeler and Gregory with two for Middle Tennessee as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month here at CBS Sports, recognizing the outstanding contributions women and girls have made on and off the field of play. Put some pressure on the basketball, see if you can come away with the steal. It's not token pressure. They're really trying to get something going here, but fun watching Mead and Blakely, two of the younger players on the floor. Both sophomores. Nice paint touch inside, and Malashka makes it four straight made buckets for Middle Tennessee. Hayes has had the most success offensively for Western Kentucky. She now has 10. And, you know, and how about Hayes? They have her at 5'8". I think that's on a really good hair day because <laughs> She seems like she just seems like a, about maybe 5'4", but what a motor give yourself an opportunity for a three-point play. And they get it right back off the unforced turnover by Middle Tennessee. Matt Insell, the, the son of Rick, assistant coach, said, what are you doing? And that's a foul call at the rim. And a driver. And, and Trying to do anything that she can. These guys are looking to get after it. And they understand that this is a, a good rivalry between these two schools, just about 100 miles apart. And everybody knows what's on the line today. Everybody wants their season to continue. And that automatic bid certainly makes it easier for Middle Tennessee to sl sleep tonight and hold how sweet it would be for Western Kentucky, a team that was picked to finish sixth in the preseason. 
Nice pass and the finish from Alaska. Macy Blevins tried the reverse, couldn't get the spin on it. And now Malaska right back into the paint, draws the foul. Finishing on the play, and now with a chance at the line. Another player, the sixth player of the year in Conference USA, completely understands her role with this team. Western Kentucky on the doorstep of their first tournament appearance in five years. Hey, if I had my druthers, I wouldn't have won co-coach of the year. I would have given it to Greg Collins over at Western Kentucky. They were picked sixth in the conference, finished second in the regular season, and now in the championship game. No defense. And Malaska makes it six straight makes for Middle Tennessee. And you might have been wondering why Maya Meredith just kind of threw her arms up. She's got two fouls already. She did not want to pick up a third there. Jenny Dell mentioned earlier. They went into this game with the mindset that they have nothing to lose. They just want to go out and have fun. Nobody expected this of them, especially after that 4-8 and eight start. Coach Collins said about two weeks ago as Maleska just is just killing it inside. Uh, you know, he stopped practice. He felt like his lady topper team. Oh, there you go. Nice dime and bucket. Harris Allen, the basket. Final 10 seconds, first half. Likely the drive. Great way to finish a fantastic quarter for Middle Tennessee. They outscore Western Kentucky 32-16, and they've made eight straight. We've got the men's championship game up next here on CBS Sports Network, 8.30 Eastern time, tip-off UAB and FAU. Western Kentucky gets right to the hoop to start this second half, and that's kind of what you've been harping on, Leah. Opportunities at the line with the clock stopped. They can't switch baskets back and forth, buckets in transition, so that the defense cannot match up and they aren't being settling into a half-court game. The drive, the bounce, but the recovery there by Maya Meredith. Alaska missed that. And it's Western Kentucky basketball. Western Kentucky averages nine threes a game. They only made three of their 18 attempts in the first half. More of the same here in the third. That ball loose for a moment and then scooped up. And well, you can call it cherry picking, you can call it hustle, maybe both. Malaska all alone. Oh, keep in mind, this is a player that comes off the bench. A six player there. Go to the bucket and attack. Attack, attack. More than half of Western Kentucky's points have come in the paint. And that's with the Lady Toppers giving up a lot of size. Malaska inside out. That was working early and it's working late. Whittington with her fourth three of this game. Deep two. Oh, get another crack at it. A third crack at it, and there we go. Otis Betancourt. Betancourt coming over from USF, played about six games for them at South Florida a year ago. Opportunity came through the portal. Get some vital minutes here in this game. Corner three is good from Gregory. She is three for three from deep. Middle Tennessee's flipped the script on one of the most prolific three-point shooting teams in the country. They have nine threes to Western's three. And it's now an 18-point lead. They had a really good team when COVID hit, and then all those great players graduated. And 
thinks they're maybe a, a year ahead of schedule here. Now Middle Tennessee looking like they're gonna run away. Only one of the other 11 Division I teams in Tennessee has more wins than Middle Tennessee. That, of course, the great Lady Vols program, and Pat Summit was still coaching when he took over. Hey, it's just a fourth foul, right? He said four. Well, I think, I think you can tell what's going on here. I'm going to just lay out and let you listen to it. At the line, that's boring. He, wa he wants everybody, anybody that will talk to him right now over at that table. But you, you, you know, you hit it on the head. You know, third most winningest active coach in 18 seasons, uh, 432 coming to the game. I was looking at the company that, that he's in with that in those 18 seasons, those four coaches. Vic Schaefer, part of that. Uh, he was upset <laughs> that Western Kentucky was already in a bonus. He thought it was only the fourth team foul. It was the fifth team foul in Western Kentucky. Got a couple of free throws, five of six from the floor, four for four from three point range, three for three at the line. That's the 13th time this season that she's had three plus threes made in the game. Steady, steady, steady. Remember after the first quarter, Middle Tennessee had turned the ball over seven times. It was a tie game. They have turned things around in a big way since. Now a 22-point lead. Nice lob and finish. And they still lost by 13 points. They knew they were going to have to be close to perfect today in the semifinal game against UTEP. She was upset with a foul call and did a little clap to the official out of frustration. She picked up a technical foul. And Coach Insel said, that was the first time he's ever had to get on Courtney Whitson because it's just about a character for him. Courtney knew it. Yeah, they were laughing about it today. Allen. You know what? Now she's got an opportunity at the line. She has struggled a little bit in her young career from the free throw line. But you know what? These are the days for young players that Kind of set the tone as well for the upcoming year. And they're going to force a turnover here and get an easy bucket. And that's Aliyah Pitts. And a stoppage in play. There was a, I don't know, a handkerchief or something on the court. If people still carry it. Still, it's still, it's okay. I was going to say, did they still carry it? My grandpa did, but he's, he's gone. Yeah, my, my dad did too. We got on him all the time. <laughs> Somebody threw one out. Helped the defense set up. Final 10 seconds. Shot clock off. The lead down to 15. Wheeler misfires. Offensive rebound. And yes, at the buzzer for Whittington, who has 16. They hit, I believe, two of their first three three-pointers yes. in the yep. first couple minutes of the game and they've made just one since. Middle Tennessee, on the other hand, has been doing that. The 11th three of the game. Ooh. Aaliyah Pitt. Likely. Oh, they're gonna get a foul right at the shot clock horn. And she hasn't made a field goal in this game either, but all four of her points coming from the free throw line. Your leading scorer basically doesn't make a shot in the semis in the championship game, and you're still on your way to winning the title. You, you, find, you find a way to help out your team. And again, this goes back to understanding everybody's role. You can have five blue chippers. You can have ten blue chippers on your roster. But last night that wasn't the case. She scored three points. She didn't make a shot from the field. But Rick Ansel said when we fell behind by a point in the fourth quarter to UTEP, it was Whittington. Middle Tennessee with just two conference losses this season. If you count the tournament, they're 20-2 against the rest of the league. 
Those two losses came at UTEP by three and at UTSA by five. Coach Insel was saying, some people thought we were dead in Texas. Nope. <laughs> it turned things around, and it started with a game earlier this season against Western Kentucky when they snapped that little skid. But all of their losses, all four of them, were tight. Buzzer beaters. In, in an instance at Mercer earlier this season, maybe a blown call late. This is a great, great Middle Tennessee club. They won their first Conference USA regular season championship since 2014. It's the most wins in conference history with 18. And they have been perfect at home the last two seasons. South Carolina is the only other school to do that. Correct. 18, excuse me, those 18 wins that, that run there is uh, a great win streak. Best 20 game start in the program history. and. Again, I uh, can't say enough of the defense that they have that turns themselves into offense, uh, the scoring margin. And that win against Louisville, that, you know, that wasn't a fluke. They did that at home. They held Louisville to seven points in the second quarter in that game. They played a heck of a defense in that ball game to win. Well, looking ahead, if, if they're able to hang on here, up by 19, seven minutes to go, Imagine that they'll see a seven seed, maybe. What's the path to a first round upset for this Middle Tennessee team? You know, being a, a seven, six or seven, I, oh, he, he just took one right to the jaw there. See if it rises to the level of a flagrant. That's, uh, that's unintentional. Yeah, totally unintentional. Should be a quick review. Yeah. If Middle Tennessee holds on here with this next seven minutes, that's 38th championship for women's sports programs at the school. That's nothing, that, you know, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> well, compare that to, let's just say, Washington State. They just won their first Correct. women's yeah. championship yeah. in basketball. So the Middle Tennessee will be getting together. The same way the studio was talking about it at halftime. And, um, you know, they're going to be a bear for anyone to tackle. Middle Tennessee is going to be in the field. Was some question whether or not they'd make it if they didn't win this conference tournament, but they have handled their business today. It was a second quarter that set everything apart. They outscored Western Kentucky 32 to 16, and now up 21 with five and a half to go. Jalen Foster. Bodies flying. Well, coming up next, before the Men's Conference USA Championship, it's the road to the Final Four and Bracket Week on Inside College Basketball. Folks in the studio will have the coverage there as we get set to crown a men's champion as well at 8.30 Eastern Time, FAU and UAB. Championship played right here on this same court. It's a unique environment. They've been doing it since 2018. Early on in tournament week, they actually have two games going on simultaneously. One behind that big black banner that you see. So you can have two games going on at once, and if you sit in the right spot, you can watch two games at once. Right. It's like the Wizard of Oz in the Ford Center, <laughs> for sure, behind the curtain. But a super environment. I can't say enough. Yeah, this game was tied after the first quarter and everything changed in the second. Middle Tennessee made eight straight shots to close the half. And Western Kentucky just could not get the three-pointer to fall. They're four for 25 from deep. And we knew that was really the only way they were going to be able to win this game is if they did more of that. Yeah, totally, yeah. And they got really thrown off kilter when they weren't able to connect that. They, I, I think, you know, another thing you look at, Lady Raiders have been to the line 22 times in this game. And um, Blakely's going to be one of these young rising stars. 20 opponents held to 60 or less points on the season and 12 opponents to 50 or less. 
You know, their time in Italy this summer helped with the cohesiveness. And it's, it'll come. It'll come with no seniors on the squad. They get off the bus. They thank the bus driver. Anytime they go out to eat, they thank the servers. It's a team that he, he really likes. And though they're, they're young, but they don't act like it. And, and that's another great fan base as well in Western Kentucky. The environment, really the area embraces the team, just like in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, you said earlier they've been about 100 miles apart, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they've been playing women's basketball against one another for 99 years. First meeting back in the mid-20s. With a baseball pass here at the home of the Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> our producer Pittman said that looked a little like Dak Prescott with the overthrow. Immediate answer and with that long three. 11 point game. And <laughs> Coach Insel is a uh, family affair with his son Matt on the staff. Blakely the rebound, and in a 12-point game, Little Tennessee burning clock. They get a little closer to hoisting another championship. It'll be a double championship, regular season and tournament. Blakely, what's that? Western trying to cut it to single digits. It hasn't been single digits since the first half. And it won't get there. Shot clock is off. Jalen Gregory, leading scorer in this game, and perfect from deep. 24 points on five of five shooting from deep. And the Middle Tennessee Lady Raiders are Conference USA Tournament Champions. their ticket to the dance, but might as well just make it academic. 